What's going on, everybody? It's Jay Wilson. It's Wednesday night, and I feel all right. Or should I say, hey, all you cool frogs and fishes. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a, a weird live. I don't expect much. I don't expect many people to be on here for a few reasons. And it's because I didn't do it last week like I said I was going to do um, due to the fact that I didn't have internet. So I got everything set up uh, in terms of internet. Finally, eight hours worth of AT&T, literally eight hours, trips to the store, doing curbside help, the whole nine yards. It was just absolutely insane. But it's fixed. It's water under the bridge, so to speak, turbo fish. And it's going to be what it's going to be. Got a little Coke Zero, a little Buffalo Trace. Oh, yes feeling delish. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot is happening. Uh, quarantine is going well. Thank you for asking. Um, it's, it's giving me an opportunity to really hone in. I mean, here's, here's the office. Look at it. See all them tanks. This one right here is going to be the zebra pleco tank. I've been still waiting to get them, but due to quarantine, I have to, I have to wait. And, uh, it, it is what it is. Been a while since I came into a live stream. How you been? It's been a whirlwind. There's so many things have happened. I'm now back in my house. Um, Sunday's video will touch on that. I don't want to touch on that tonight. Um, if you have questions about anything, we, we can discuss them, but uh, Sunday's video that will come out. It's going to be pre-done. It's, it's going to be exactly the way it is. The cichlid shack is in the house. Hope your family is doing well, my friend. Um, but quarantine has given me the opportunity to do some things that I needed to get done. So one of the aquariums I hadn't been able to touch in oh, at least six months, if not more. So it went without water changes. Everything seemed to be okay. I know I'm missing a few fish, but overall still a healthy tank. I attest that to multiple filtrations. So redundancy, stock load, not feeding as much. Ultimately that plays a huge role. Um, the other tank you may have seen, um, I just, it's actually the thumbnail, kaput. Um, matter of fact, I'm glad because a bulkhead started to leak and that's a scary thing to deal with. I'm missing a few fish. Yeah, well, I'll discuss that. I'm talking about that tank right now, Neil. Um, so I drained it. Uh, top quality from Instagram came over. He did some cool stuff. And um, yeah, it's now got about, I don't know, six inches of water in it. Turbo fish, thanks, buddy. And now it's it's in preparation for what it is that I'm going to do. So I took all the plants out of that. I'm going to put them in the tank and he can tank. Those Amazon swords that I had came from Flip Aquatics and they came like this. Now they're like that. So I can only imagine the nitrates that were just being spun around in that tank. However, um, I had two Tetras left out of 500. Um, that's not just lack of being able to have access to the tank. That has a lot to do with the fish that were in there, the overflow box, Tetras being weak. And overall, they were they were hopping up over into the overflow box going down. And remember, I had a canister and a sump. And um, yeah, it is crazy. Love watching your videos. Michael Jones, I greatly appreciate that. I'm going to get back to me. It's been months, uh, eight months, nine months, uh, maybe a little bit more where I wasn't me. Going through a lot of personal stuff, nothing you know, no pity, none of that. It's just, it is what it is. Life transpires and you move forward, learn from your mistakes. And so that's what I'm doing. Fishy biz. What it do, man. So there's an aquarium behind me. Let me, uh, let me get out of the way. I don't have a desk yet. <laughs> I don't have a desk. I don't have much. Um, so this is a new aquarium. Ah, huh? Pretty fancy. And I'll pull you closer and we'll kind of go over because I want your help. Uh, ultimately, I want you folks to kind of guide me on what we should do in this tank. So let me take out the filtration real quick. That's what I'm going to be using. I moved it so that I wouldn't move it to the shelf or out into the other room. Um, product placement. 
Uh, as you know, I work for CJ. I am the national sales manager. So you're going to see CJ. It's not me going, Jerry's trying to push another product on us, man. This is just, this is crazy. This is what they do. No, it's my job. It's my career. It's what I love doing. It just happens to be a company that moves water. And I'm in charge of all the retail stores in <laughs> North America. So my job is to talk about CJ. But we're not going to do that right now because it's this isn't the video for that. This is casual conversation, 3D background, that whole thing. This is not going to have a 3D background. Let's not do a 3D background, right? So I've got uh, three nano tanks over there that don't have backgrounds. Um, let me see if I can spin this. Whoop. So got that bad boy up top, Zebra Plecos, Sushin the Tetras, Ember Tetras, and then Bingo Bango. TB got an upgrade. He was in like a three gallon and now he's in like a six, seven, <laughs> uh, definite upgrade. And I'll, I'll bring the computer over there in a little bit. Can we go 3D up and out of the tank? Hang a ceiling light. No, what are you doing? Uh, congrats on the new career, brother. You deserve it, by the way. I appreciate it. Um, if there's one thing people can say about me, it's I do work pretty hard, I think. Um, compliment the left side of the room. Well, hold on, bud. Hold on. So let me remove this. Let's get some ideas flowing for this tank because you're ultimately going to guide this. So I'm using two canisters. One is designed for up to a 90 gallon. The other is designed for up to an 80 gallon. And then I'm going to use this little pump a dump right here um, because I want some flow and I need to learn all the products. Uh, so here's, here's what's crackling. The Mad Aquarius. Bigs. Love them. What happened to Fritz? Uh, nothing actually. So um, Fritz and I were doing great and Fritz isn't a person, but Fritz Aquatics and I were doing great. I was approached by CJ and ultimately it worked in the best interest of what I need to do in my personal life and ultimately goals, right? So it was a major, major uh, promotion, so to speak. I went from a salesperson, sales manager in charge of a, a small region and doing social media and things like that to then all of the stores in the US and working on social media and things, things will continually change. But the major factor was I get to work from home, uh, working at Fritz. I received a lot of benefits and those benefits required that I was tangible to the office. And, um, I, I couldn't be tangible to the office in the future. So that's why this, this thing really kicked off. It wasn't even the promotion. It was, I can work from home. And ultimately that really gave me the freedom that I needed uh, for me, for my personal life, right? So I didn't think about anything else. I, did, I didn't think about like, well, what about my aquariums? I'm just gonna be so darn darn worried about those. Uh, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? I didn't think about that. I didn't go, well, man, I wonder what the, I wonder what my friends on the internet is gonna think. I, I can't worry. I, I cannot worry about that to make major decisions, right? I'm not worried about it at all because you folks are amazing and you get to help me do stuff like this. But when you're making a personal decision, I know dang right well, you're not like, I wonder what Jay would do right now. You don't think that and you have to make decisions for what's best for you, right? So it's, well, gosh, God darn it, I'm going to work from home. I'm going to do me. I'm going to take care of my family, my fish, and uh, my friends. My friends will be there. They'll know I love them. You know, that's, that is the idea. Um, and, I, and I have to bring comedy into it because that, <laughs> that's me. Um, so we've hit the sarcastic voices part. We have been busy working at the hospital. No more African cichlids. That's wrong. Uh, Selco. Uh, I always say Selco. <laughs> it's a Fritz. Selco boost. Selco tanks. Here's the deal. I do have my Tanganyikan tank. I do not have any Malawi fish right now. Uh, not, not to say I won't get them, but yes, 
Uh, I do have Africans still in the house. I've got bettas, tetra, shrimp. Matter of fact, Liam's shrimp tank is absolutely crazy. So if you go check out CJUS on Instagram, you'll see his tank. And I'm going to post before and after photos tomorrow uh, on my Instagram. So follow me there if you don't. Um, I already have a saltwater tank, so I'm not going to do another saltwater tank. So I'll just rip that right from the comments. Not going to happen. Um, and the reason being is because I've, I've got something planned. I already have a 16 gallon. It's got some coral. It's, I haven't killed anything. Uh, one piece of coral I just noticed was dying. Um, I think it's because of the move, but I haven't lost anything else. And it's, it's, a, it's really crazy that your ma can definitely do some salt water. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited. Um, can I buy a bottle? <laughs> uh, but I want to take you through this tank. So it's a, it's a company called Neptunian Cube. Neptunian cube. It's a cube. Um, they're not all cubes. They, they do a ton of different stuff, but um, I actually like the guy that owns it. He's a really great dude. Um, and ultimately I was down there and saw the aquarium and was like, oh yes, I'm digging. I'm digging what you are brewing, my brother. So very thick glass. Uh, it's 22 inches front to back, 22 inches top to bottom. And this one is 36 inches left to right. Um, Built-in foam pad right there underneath. But I haven't touched the tank. I haven't re-leveled the doors. The only thing I did was level the aquarium and uh, the stand, and everything's good. Let me see. Lots of flow, heavy substrate, nothing loose. I have one tank. Basically, I copied everything on your video since two years ago. Don't leave cichlids. Oh, I'm not. I'll never leave cichlids. I'll always keep cichlids of some sort, whether it's uh, Tanganyikan, whether it's Malawi, Victorian, I will always have cichlids because I love cichlids. But my my ideas, my inspiration and where I want to put my creativity sometimes morphs. It's morphed into nano tanks because I was living in an apartment. I couldn't lug a six foot tank up the stairs and be like, eh, ah, time to fill her up. <laughs> I couldn't do it. See, I mean, I, I tried, I thought about it, and then I said, you know what? This is a temporary thing. Why go through all that hassle of lugging an aquarium six foot up the third floor, get an engineer out? It just didn't make sense. Um, I miss you too, Ruben Rivera. Um, I've been in and out. I've been in and out. But my goal is to be here every Wednesday at 7 Central, and the idea would be um, just to kind of converse, to do something different. It's not pre-done. It's off the cuff and you can see it later and, you know, people can hate on it, whatever. But at the end of the day, I find these the most fun because I get to interact with you guys like legit. So, um, uh, think that's my sons. And then I've got a bunch of offshoot neocardinias from flip aquatics that, um, that's not a plug. That's where I got them. And, uh, they were in the sump. They were still there from the time I made that video. Everyone was like, couldn't they, bro? Couldn't be. I said how to keep cichlids and shrimp together, which they were together technically. So clickbait, if you were like, ah, I can't wait to see him do this. I've been waiting my whole life for this. It wasn't clickbait. I did. I kept them on the same system. I didn't keep them in the same tank. I never said in the same tank. And so I had them in a refugium. They, they prolificated in the sump. And when I broke everything down, I put some in here and, and they're still alive. I did a cichlid tank because of watching you, Jay. Thanks, man. I watched how you did everything. I appreciate that. Mike Jones. Um, it means a lot. It means a lot that you can look back. Let, let's say it ended today, right? I, I didn't do fish anymore. It's pretty cool to look back and see the inspiration that some of my tanks have had. I mean, that, that means so much more than, than, than some of the things that happen. It's like, I know that in some way, shape or form, I don't need to talk about it. I know in some way, shape or form, I, I, there was something that I did that helped that person achieve what they wanted to achieve. And it's really, really, really cool. Uh, something's a little bit off about this live. <laughs> so uh, that's actually in the room over next to me. So I'm back in my house. I was in the apartment. That's where the, the bison were. I love bison. If you don't know, I absolutely love the American bison. It's my spirit animal. It's freaking amazing. 
Um, so yes, it's not here. I did, let's see, Jay, how does a rimless tank down where you live work for humidity levels in your house in the winter? In Canada, it would be a nightmare. So that's a great question. And thank you, Biggs. And before I even answer that, if you don't know, now you know, Chris Biggs, AKA the Mad Aquarius, does a live, uh, he does live, he does YouTube, go check him out. It's Mad Aquarius. He is an awesome person. He is extremely knowledgeable and he is raw. He is what we need. He doesn't hold punches. He says what he says and he's a great, great person. Uh, was that Joe Exotic impression? No, actually I've never tried Joe Exotic as an impression. That's probably a good one to try. Um, how's it going, Cryptic Reefs? You have always been an inspiration to all of us fish freaks on YouTube. Well, Aquatacy, you, my friend, have done some amazing things, so I appreciate that. My spirit animal was Joe Exotic. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the tank. Let's get back to the tank. So Matt Aquarius asks, how does humidity work on something like this? So there is no top, right? I'm not going to buy one. I'm not going to get one. It's going to stay like that. So for me, I don't keep my house very warm and the places I live, they do get cold, but they don't get cold like they do in Canada. And Chris, I don't remember exactly where you live in Canada, but if it's Calgary, I'm sorry. But outside of that, the evaporation isn't horrible for me. Um, I keep my house all the time around 70 degrees in the summer. I have very high ceilings. So if, if I want it down to 67, um, I'll have to figure out some stuff like Elon Musk and to heat and uh, to cool this house. Uh, to heat it, it's the same thing. I, I really don't raise it above 68. So it does a pretty good job. And I've my tanks are in a room with um, carpet now where the other ones are out there and they're fully, they have lids on them. I've always found that the smaller the tank with no lid, the faster the evaporation. Of course, that makes sense because of space, right? There's just less water, faster evaporation, and, and it goes down quick. And that happens a lot in my saltwater tank, uh, especially with a lot of water movement. Um, is he blushing yet? Tell him he's cute. <laughs> the Mad Aquarius, uh, did you just say you had a spirit animal? I did. Uh, it's the American bison. And the reason why it is my spirit animal is for a few, few things about it. It's resilient. Um, it was almost extinct and now it's back. And it's because it, it didn't want to go. It doesn't matter. I understand humans helped it, but humans also almost made it extinct. Um, it's very stoic, powerful, fast, um, elusive. Um, it can camouflage itself looking like a dang boulder out in the middle of an open prairie field. Um, you can use that animal from back top to bottom, left to right, everything, the hide, the meat, the bones, the horns, everything. Everything can be used and it's just, it tastes good. It's cool looking and it is my spirit animal. And that's why I drink Buffalo Trace, <laughs> straight bourbon whiskey from Tennessee. Um, you're dead on right about the evaporation. Thank you so much, friend, for the push. No, man, I mean, it's not even a push. It's nowadays if I was like, hey, go out and buy these glasses. It's a set of six. Get 5% off when you use Relentless. It's like, no, you're pushing it. But then if I'm like, hey, go check out this dude. He's doing a great job. Like, man, what you do is you push stuff. So it's, dude, I'm doing it because I think you're a good dude. Meeting you at the ACA, I think for the first time we actually converse, you are the same dude. And I really appreciate that. Uh, can you help me name my turtle? It's a yellow spotted Amazon river turtle. Is it in a tank alone? What's your favorite cartoon growing up? Um, colder than Mars in the winter. <laughs> That's awesome. So I want to show you this tank because there's some really cool features, um, that I didn't know it had until I brought it in this room. So I haven't leveled any of this yet, but peep this stand compartment for electrical. Look at that. Boom. I don't know if you can see that in the dark, but peep that. That is what I'm talking about. Vent on the back so the humidity doesn't stay under here. What? Foam padding on the bottom. So if you do use a sump, it will level for anything else you need. Very, very nicely made stand. 
the space up here for the heat to get out, heat to get out, and then for you to run all your cables down. Neptunian cube, I'm telling you, it's it's awesome. It's I don't even know the prices, other than I got a heck of a deal. But the neat part is, is once everything's ready, um, they will be for sale, and stores can carry them and. Um, just make me want to skin you. It, it's great. It's um, it's really, really cool, this aquarium. Um, I like that it's ultra clear glass. It's, you know, these are just rubber stoppers. I take them off. I just left them on there. Um, but overall, I'm really excited. But I want to know what I'm designed for. I love feeding my fish. Um, I love being able to watch my fish or, or disconnect a pump or whatever the case is. So I'm not going to do any automation on this, but I will do some automation on a um, saltwater aquarium just for flow and things like that. Uh, this is a very nice stand, Neil. It's actually really, really nice. And the aquarium is well built. So I'm, I'm super pumped. Um, yeah, it's in a 40 gallon. It's alone. Um, let's see. Jay, are we going to see anything like a huge reveal from CJ at Macna? Man, I'm not even sure Macna is happening. One day I'm going to have Jay Wilson. One day I'm going to have Jay Wilson's money. I'm, I don't have a lot of money. Um, I'm not saying that I don't work hard to make more money, but um, I don't know what anybody categorizes as rich or whatever the case is. I'm very smart with my money. Uh, I used to not be, uh, but I'm not. I'm not rich and I'm not poor. Um, and what I mean by poor is somebody that may even have a lot of money that just is never happy. So I think I do okay. And it provides me the means to take care of my son. It provides me the means to do some great things and to give back. So I'm, I'm really excited. Hit the like button, please. He's a hustler, baby. Not a hustler. Uh, I'm a grinder. Uh, I believe hustling is sort of like cutting corners. Uh, when I hear hustling, it was like, oh man, man, you got to hustle, hustle, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I don't like to do hurry up. I like to grind it out. Um, sometimes maybe too much, but I appreciate the sentiment. I know where you're coming from. Um, so as I said, it's alone in a 40 gallon. That tank isn't permanent as it's only a hatchling. And yes, of course it's alone. Okay. Uh, Shalam. What was your favorite cartoon? When you were growing up or what is your favorite cartoon now so we can name this oxalotl um were you an nco in the navy i was um i don't know maybe you saw that maybe you didn't but this is the first time i've ever put these on the wall uh it's my ncis credentials and a picture of me when i was uh working in saudi arabia so uh, i was in the navy for 13 years let's see see if i missed anything do, 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 do. So it's the way you talk. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. So, uh, well, Shalam, I didn't see it. There's so many comments happening. Let's see. Can you help me name my yellow? Oh, it's a yellow spotted Amazon river turtle. Okay. Homer it is. Don't chocolate beer. Ooh. <laughs> um, I like the Simpsons. Perfect. Or it could be Maggie. I would probably prefer Maggie as opposed to Homer, but I get it. Um, well, thank you for your service, Neil. So let's go. Let's let's start spitballing, right? Let's let's start chatting about what we should do in here. Should we do Africans? Uh, should we do a Tanganyikan community? Uh, should we turn it into a South American tank? Uh, North American tank? I don't. What do you want to do? Um, I was on the USS America. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Maggie is a good name, though. Maggie it is. Uh, no, I don't want to do craw I don't want to do crayfish or crawfish. That's, uh, I don't know. No, nah, I don't know. That's not, that's not a thing. That's not going to be a thing. There's crawfish right out front in the little ditch that I have. I don't want to, I don't want to bring them inside. So, Jay Wilson, hashtag lifestyles. <laughs> yeah. Um, so well, let's, what should I do? I mean, I could put one fish in there. I could put a couple hundred. Uh, somebody said brockish. Plants or no plants. So here's my thing. Um, I'm good 
at keeping some plants alive. And I'm not so good at keeping other plants alive. And ideally, I don't want to, I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. So, you know, the lighting's got to be right for certain plants. And I just think that requires so much, right? So I don't mind doing some easy plants. I love Anubias. I don't mind swords. Um, puffers. I mean, I could, I could do figure eights or green spot, just like massive amounts of green spots. Uh, sometimes when I think about it, I'm like, oh, that would be an amazing idea. It would look so good with so many of this one fish. And then it's like, am I wasting tank space, right? Puffers are pretty cool. Mud skippers, that's not a bad idea, but for mud skippers, I would have to build. And with it being an open top and so deep and tall and wide, I would rather try that in a, in a low boy, if that makes sense. So Andre Scott, your YouTube videos on that tank and stand I like, just can't wait till you set it up and what you're going to put in that tank. I like to see you put some blue rams in it. Um, that's, that's a, that's a good idea. That's an amazing idea. I know just the place rainbow fish are great ideas. Um, uh, let's see how big is it? I was late <laughs> candy. It's okay. Um, it's 36 inches left to right, 22 front to back, 22 top to bottom. Um, and it's a perfect footprint. I really, I'm really digging it. I have enough filtration to move. I'm trying to get you guys gallons per hour. Basically, both of these canisters are good for a 200 gallon aquarium. So they're going to go on there so we can put whatever. Uh, there's rare, those rare black rams, flower horn grade A. Nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, I don't hate on flower horns. I don't. I actually think that they're very, very cool. However, um, there's some things I don't like about flower horns and we'll just leave it at that. Um, I think they deserve a place in the hobby because a lot of people love them. It's not for me. It's not for me. Um, let's see. Not a strict biotope though. It's because it's a great learning experience as you research a country and species. So why don't you do what I do? Pick a country and then theme the tank around it with fish, plants, and invertebrates from that country. It's not a bad idea. Um, that's actually a really cool idea. Uh, Shadente, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you don't give me a scientific name, uh, and it's not an African cichlid, I have no idea, <laughs> no idea. Uh, for the record, that stand is light and easy to move. Uh, very, very easy to move. Uh, the tank is not bad either. Uh, glowfish for sure. Yep. Not doing it. Uh, can you put a few discus in there? I can. So we got discus, we've got rams, we've got puffers. Um, I only do camphor uh, flower horns. I don't know the difference between that flower horn and a Charmin flower horn. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, discus are a little ambitious. They're not ambitious. Um, they're boring. Let's just put it that way. Discus to me are a little boring. Um, it's like frontosa. I, I think frontosa, and I'll use this word. I think frontosa are majestic. Uh, I also think that discus are majestic. However, just too majestic. And what I mean by majestic is they're beautiful. They move with purpose slowly. And, you know, they can dart across an aquarium, but God, I just don't. No, I'm the discus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Neolamper Logus Brashardi. Now we're cooking with grease. Um, I like that idea. Um, I don't like glowfish. Don't know why. I just find them a bit plasticky or something. I get what you're saying. Uh, but they have a true place in the industry and it's because it, it allows people that may never look at fish to go, Whoa, what is that? You know, and it's years and years in the making of line breeding and, and making sure that it's sustainable. And then it gets people into the hobby and it comes down to us to help steer them in better directions and say right directions, but better directions. Multis with sweet guppies up high. Okay. What's a favorite fish that you've never kept? Maybe you could base the tank around that species. Favorite fish that I've never kept. Tank is not big enough for that one. Um, I 
maybe I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Cause I felt like when I wanted to, to have something, I, I've went out and, and done something to make it happen. Um, I've thought about like making this a really cool tank and Eakin tank. And then I'm picking up an aquarium tomorrow. Uh, no Friday. I think Friday. I actually just got the text. I'll read it. <clears throat> Let's see. Tomorrow, 11 a.m., pick up your aquarium. Bingo! Uh, so I'll be picking up a five-foot aquarium, very similar to the one that I had prior to bringing it to the gentleman in Iowa. Um, I'm going to put it in the same spot, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be able to, to scape it together, talk about it, make the plan come. So next Wednesday when we do this, uh, ultimately we'll start with this. We'll start the tank, right? That's the idea. We're going to start it. So um, we'll get to that. Polini cichlids. It was a fun tank. Multis and guppy. He's not tall enough. Clown harem with anemones. I'm not going to do salt on this one. Um, I discussed that earlier on. I apologize for that. With the amount of flow you're going to be able to provide that aquarium, how about a very fast water hill stream tank for like Asian, Cypronids, no heat required, less evaporation? Hmm. I like Biggs' thoughts. Now, Biggs, let me ask you a question to bounce that off of you. Do you think that the tank is too um, short for something like that to create like a, a hill stream, uh, so to speak? Picked up a 14-gallon Aquiana Peck over 29 on sale. Another better tank. Bam. KG Cichlids. Hola, what's going on? Uh, Candy, I like my idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean – one of the suggestions is going to be a Tanganyikan tank. So we'll, we'll, we'll hold that and, and hear me out um, because I'm going to get to Chris after he responds because uh, Hillstream loaches are pretty sweet. Um, I'm thinking bigger style boulder, river stone like some sand, a little mixture, maybe some brown sand, tan, and some white mixed together. Um, I see you have a tank there. Hmm, obviously. <laughs> um, and then bunch of shells, right? Bunch of shells. Tanks tall enough. Left to right, it's good. And we throw some big shells, some little shells. We get a really fat community of shell dwellers of your guys' choice. And we're not doing petrochromis. How are we going to do petros in there, Josh? It's 36 inches. <laughs> what, one? Um, and then, yeah. And then we can do some middle middle swimmers, some sips. Maybe if we have enough rock work, we could do some Le Lupe uh, because they're jerks. And then um, maybe some Xenos. We could do that tank again, but in a better way. Um, let's see. I'm redoing a bunch of my tanks during the shelter in place order. I also have a brand new one to set up. So I'm in the same boat as you trying to figure out what I want to do. Yeah, because I mean, I got that six foot tank that I took down and the idea I have for it is for me, it's not, it is going to be ridiculous and it's going to take a little bit of time. It's not going to take, you know, years, but it's going to take time and um, we'll see how it goes. So Biggs came back and said, no, one of my favorite aquariums many years ago was an original buffalo head. Yes. Freaking kick butt fish with four massive power heads. It was class five rapids and full on epic. I, Buffalo head is on the list. Check. Um, I'm liking that idea. Do that. If you don't, you won't be happy. Um, and I do very much like the Tang idea, La Lupia red fish, rainbow shiners, 115 inch male blue Zayer. KG cichlid, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Uh, African community. So dwarf sips like blue neon, stay away from micros. Hmm. So... That's an idea. So there's the two ideas so far, and we need one more. So Tanganyikan community, which I think would be pretty cool because of the height and the depth. Um, if it wasn't as deep, I would steer away from a community style thing just because it wouldn't be the footprint. But because of the size, the footprint of this, not because it's big, but because of the footprint, I think that that community works well. Um, and then I really like the buffalo head idea. I really, really do. So I'm going to research that. Now give me one more. Make it juicy, folks. 
make it juicy and let's ask some questions. Does anybody have any questions? Um, and then I'll show you these aquariums over here. Uh, talk about what I did and what the ideas are for them. Nano community tank. So I did that and then I didn't do it. If that makes sense, learning to keep fish. One Venustus. <laughs> no, man. That, that, out of all the fish, that one. Um, I've got it. All mosquito fish. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys are losing it here. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about those tanks here in a second. But let's get some questions going. Anything from the CARES list? Uh, I have to look. I haven't looked at the CARES list in a while. I, I mean – I like VIX, but you know, sometimes they all can look the same. There are some pretty rad um, Lake Victorian fish. I think most of them are on the CARES list. Uh, Radical Reefs has some buffalo head. Uh, how do you keep your tank from Mike up? Question, uh, I don't, hey, Andre Scott, I'm not sure what you mean, native tank. Texas sucks because there's not many native fish here. And most of the stuff is way too big and I couldn't keep it anyways. I don't know if you can help, but I have a breeding group of crystal shrimp. The female always gets pregnant, but I never see the babies. Please help. Um, what else is in it? Just shrimp? So if, let me, let me get the answer to that question. Is there just crystal shrimp in there? 10 pea puffer, heavily planted or bumblebee gobies. I do like the bumblebee gobies. If I was going to do puffers, I don't, I don't know this because I'm asking. It's impossible to know everything there is to know about everything about fish. And if you claim that, you're a turd bucket. <laughs> uh, so just shrimp. Do you have a lot of flow? What kind of tank is it? Kind of give me some schematics of the tank. Uh, filtration, things like that. I want to know all that before I – before I give you my thoughts and ideas. So native tanks out, but puffers. I would do a California native tank, but it's the same deal here. All native California fish get too big. Yeah, so guys, I'm keeping a uh, an alligator gar. <laughs> like it's, this is either going to be a Tanganyikan community, buffalo head, or puffer. Because it's been mentioned a few times and I really dig it. Pea puffers can be really weak. I've kept them, um, just not really good. Um, Amazon puffer, saddle puffer, fugu puffer, a bunch of pea puffers, South American biotope, bumblebee tuna, shikaka. Nice reference to Ace Ventura guy. Um, if I don't know, puffers wise, like how many can I keep? Can I only keep one depending on, you guys are telling me foreign stuff. I know this isn't part of the chat, but I dropped you a message about the Zetlite you've done a review on. When's the update? Holla. Um, give me one second. I'll do it right now for you. Oh, goodness. So the gentleman is asking about the Zetlite. So Zetlite makes a wide array of lights. Matter of fact, that second one has a really cool light. It's like a Pico light, I guess you can say. But he's talking about, uh, don't mind my super rigged contraption here. But this is the Lancia 2, right? Super sexy. Woo! Look at how thin it is. Doesn't matter if you get the 48-inch one, you get 36, you get this humdinger. It's all the same thickness. Spotted Congo puffer. Hmm. Is this tank big enough for that? I don't know. I'm, a, I'm literally asking you guys. It's a 20 gallon long with a big sponge filter. Um, I would say either she's having some health issues and she can't give birth to these shrimp properly or something's in there is eating them. Uh, if, if she's actually getting pregnant, uh, you should see shrimp. I mean, I have a small little tank my son has just fed and fed and fed no water changes just top off there are hundreds of shrimp in there now so maybe she's not giving birth because genetically she can't uh, that would be my guess if you don't see any in there um but so this is the zet light it's the lancia 2 and he was asking about the 48 inch one well the 48 inch one i put on a a tanganican tank 
at uh, Fritz Aquatics. Uh, the in, they have a, a lab over there and I put it on that aquarium. They're the same. The, the app is the same. What I will say is this light is absolutely sexy. Okay. Super sexy, easy on the eyes. You can hang it. You can hook it up into some T5 or T8, or you can use the app. However, the app sucks sometimes because there's two. And um, I'll post it on a story on Instagram if you follow it, the, the two apps. But this is good for a planet tank. You can customize the lighting output. It's, it's full on RGB. And um, red, green, blue, I believe it's, you got magenta hues. This is the freshwater one. There's also a saltwater one. But like I said, it's a very attractive. I, this is like the Motorola Razor of aquariums. This would be amazing on a frameless water box tank. Look at that. I mean, seriously, are you kidding me? The app is finicky. It works, but it's finicky and it can be frustrating from time to time. And I'm being real. I was given this light. So I, you know, I could be like, man, it's the greatest of all times. Or I can be like, I really like this. This is a beautiful light. You should buy this light. It's not as expensive as other models. It works extremely well. It's bright. It will keep basic plants alive. Um, heavily planted tanks. I don't know. I've never really had a heavily planted tank. It did a kick butt job of growing algae on uh, the bottom tank over here. Like a kick butt job. Like cyano almost. <laughs> like cyano freaking, it was like thick green. It was really doing it. But this was also very close to the water. Uh, it does run a little warm. Um, the guy from Police Academy. <laughs> What's his name? God. He used to do the puppet from... Um, oh man, I forgot that show, but so yeah, this light works. Does, matter of fact, I just had a fluval. Is it 3.0? 48 inch blow out. What kind of trash is that? Like literally doesn't turn on. I, I checked the power adapter, everything. I've got two others that are working perfectly fine. This one just goes, um, but I've got this still running. I've got, um, a Phoenix that's still running. So what I'm getting at is, is different, different lightings will do different things at all times. Some may go out and you may spend 300 bucks on them. Some may last forever and you pay 20 bucks for them. But I will say middle of the road, this is a phenomenal light for what it does. It has built in Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, God with, that's who it is. And it's attractive. So if you cannot hide a light, I would so, so, so um, rock this because it's just that attractive. And I, I mean, it's metal, like it's brushed. It's sexy. It's champagne. Do it, do it, buy it. <laughs> um, I don't even know where you get them to be honest with you. You can probably get them on Amazon or something like that, but, uh, definitely cool. Um, I like the tea time. I like golf tea time. Um, need to free up some room. Can tiger barbs go with Savrums? Blue Acara Fire Mouth and Rainbows. Can it be done? I'm sure. Should you? Probably not. Um, they're both, like, not both. They're all a bunch of turds. <laughs> like, they all could be turds. Uh, just be careful and just make sure you have enough filtration. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell anybody not to do something. Um, I used to play in the same clubs as him. Oh my goodness. That would have been so awesome to meet him. Um, how much do you think the tank costs that you have in your YouTube videos? This one or the big ones? I just, which ones? Um, thanks, man. Mine is a five foot Mbuna tank. Just wanted to see if it would be any good for Mbuna. Thanks for the update. No, this is absolutely perfect for Mbuna. Um, and I, and I do like the ability of changing it. It's like having a current USA light. I like it. Uh, but can you get very similar features in another light. Not all the same features, but similar. Yeah, you can. There's lots of them, even cheaper options. Um, I, the other cool thing is this is gel. So it's very soft touch. Really nice. Digging it. Super cool, bro. Super cool. So yeah, Zet Light Lancia 2, super sexy, has a versatility, Wi-Fi enabled, app controlled, but the app can suck sometimes. Um, Let's see. I missed a bunch of stuff. Bobcat golf tea time. <laughs> That's where you got tea time. 
Uh, more of that Pepsi and he'll sound like Bender from Futurama. It's not Pepsi, dude. Okay? I'm not Britney Spears. Oh, baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? No, I'm not Britney Spears. Um, this is Coke Zero. I'm watching my figure. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you recommend the marine or plant? As I don't have plants, just rockscaping them. So that's actually a good question. He's asking, do I recommend a marine light for an imbuna tank that, you know, just has fish, of course, no plants, or the freshwater? I have grown to absolutely love the natural effects of freshwater light. 7K, right? 10K is super crisp. When I look at a marine tank, it gives that bluish hue. Unless you're spending quite a bit of money and getting yourself like an Ecotech um, light or a Radeon or something like that where they, uh, you know, I have a Prime HD on my uh, saltwater tank and I can take the blue out. That wouldn't be bad. But I just think that the LEDs on the marine, which I've had, are just too blue. There's this purplish bluish shoe no matter what you do. Uh, so I would recommend fresh, uh, hands down. How is your dart frogs? Okay, guess we'll update. This is good because there's probably gonna be a lot of people that hate on me right now about that. Uh, 46 minutes in, we'll do about 15 more minutes. So get your questions, make them juicy. Let's get some things going here. Um, all of them are gone. I still have the vivariums. Got a dash. Blessings to you, buddy. Absolutely, Aquatacy. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, my friend. Stay healthy. So all the dart frogs are gone. Uh, when I got my, my tank back, my vivarium, I was able to take that out of the house. Um, I had one left. I don't know how it happened. It could have been humidity. It could have been food. It could have been a multitude of things. It could have been aggression. That's what I think it is. That's what I'll stick to. But in the end of the day, I had one left, and the one just didn't fare well. It was too skinny. I tried everything and it, it just didn't work out. Still have the vivarium, still very much love it and will be adding frogs as they come available. As far as the other one, I had some uh, Baja Hilaga, beautiful, beautiful thumbnail frogs. They're imitators. Um, same thing. I had one left when I was able to get that vivarium. I actually... I actually sent that one to somebody that's looking to breed in uh, Georgia, I believe it was. So I have no frogs right now, but I have two species that I'm after. I'm waiting for them to become available and then I will put them in the vivarium. And then you're about to see some wicked awesome stuff like, huh? Smart pock. This is going to be dot frogs, right? Dot frogs everywhere. Dot frogs. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited to there's just a lot of stuff in the past, right? We've done a lot of cool stuff. We, we've, we, we've learned, we've understood some things personally, professionally, all of that stuff. It's all there. It's all back. I've recycled some of it. I threw some of it in the trash. I buried some of it. I lit some of it on fire. Um, and now it's time to do what it is that puts a smile on face. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Hey, Jay, who would you recommend to go for for a frontosa colony, Southeast cichlids? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can go to Southeast cichlids. Uh, Cunningham cichlids might be able to get you some. Dave's Rare Fish can get you some. Um, trying to think who else. I mean, I'm sure the cichlid shack can get you some. Buried. No, that was, it was like a figure of speech about stuff in my past. I can't even. I'm not Carol Baskin. <laughs> I'm going to kill that woman. Uh, how much do you feed your fish? I don't feed a lot. Um, matter of fact, I, I've been feeding recently a lot due to the fact that um, my fish didn't look the way they should have. So I've been feeding every day. Typically, I'm the type of dude that will go, eh, my fish need to be fed. I haven't fed them in a day or two. Drop some food in. However, um, my recommendation for folks, twofold, whatever you're feeding now, Whatever you take out of your cup, your jug, your bag, your freezer pack, your bootstrap, your sweatpants back pocket, your whatever, wherever you pull the food out of, do 50% of that if you are feeding every day. 50%. I would even go a step further as to say if you are still feeding that, I would feed every other day. I'm tired of hearing, 
Yeah, I feed Northfin. I feed Omega. I feed Hikari. I feed, and I give my fish snacks, right? I give them cheese puffs, nacho cheese, Doritos. Matter of fact, I even give them Carol Baskin's husband's meat. I give them everything. They need snacks. I see them. I walk up to the tank and they say, feed me. Stop doing that. <laughs> Stop doing that. Your fish are grazers, most of them, or opportunistic eaters. If you dump a hamburger patty in there with a hot dog and spicy brown mustard, they're going to eat it. It's either going to decay and something in there is going to eat it or they're going to eat it. I feed my fish from my loins. <laughs> um, stop, please. Do, do this. If you have kids and your kid is sitting there playing, watching TV, you're like, oh, my God, he looks hungry. Sprinkle some of them Cheeto puffs all over him because he was looking mighty hungry. Are you kidding me? No. Right? Your kid has the ability to communicate, hello, I'm hungry, father. I'm hungry, mother. And you feed them whatever it is you're feeding them. Hopefully it's a, a, a very nice select balanced diet. Same thing with fish. They are unable to communicate, so stop feeding them trash all the time. They don't need to eat all the time. Understand the natural behaviors of a fish because whether fish change over time based on app, based on location or, well, I just took a yellow tang and I acclimated them to straight fresh water. Look at me now, huh? Like, I get it. You can do a lot of that stuff. And not in that, I'm being very facetious and sarcastic. But you can do that. You're like, well, I keep, yep, uh -huh, I've been doing it. I keep my angel fish with my mimbabunas all the time. They find nobody fights, nobody does nothing. I come up to the tank, everybody's in check. I sprinkle Tostitos in there. And then I give them a little bit of my frozen shrimp, blood worms, black worms, earth worms, all the color worms, and then some full soldier black fly larvae, a little bit of North Fin Flakes like Krill Pro, and then I do a little bit of extreme, even though sometimes it's not that very good of food. And then sometimes I give them my leftover McDonald's french fries. Like, no, stop. Just because you were able to mix those fish doesn't mean you can just feed them whatever way you want because their insides didn't change genetically, right? They still have the same digestive problems. They still have the same digestive track, right? That didn't morph over time. And the idea is you have to understand that. Trophius, grazers, right? People go, don't you dare feed them any protein rich food, they'll die. Wrong. And here's why it's wrong. Trophius are natural grazers in the wild. If you are grazing in Lake Tanganyika on the rocks, right? Don't you think at some point, because you're grazing throughout the whole day, that you're going to pick up some protein, maybe some snails, maybe some meaty bits left over that are just sitting on top? Absolutely. It ain't Walmart meat off of the back of a truck, y'all. It's It happens, right? So they need it. They need it to thrive. I'm not saying only feed high protein. I'm saying you have to understand a natural diet. It may not be the natural habitat. I get it. But a natural diet is ideal. Uh, I'm dead serious. And I'm, this isn't a push for Northfin. Yes, I truly think Northfin is still to this day the best food on the planet. I don't care wh what company comes from where and goes, all right, everyone. Well, back in the game. We've relabeled. We've got it out to some select folks. And we're going to win. It's not about that. It's about providing a vast array of foods in this industry. And ultimately, there's no better than Northfin. I'm not saying there's, I'm not saying any other brand is horrible. I'm just saying if you're looking for a well-balanced, that's all I've been feeding since I've been feeding it five years ago. I have not had bloat one time. I have not lost a fish to any nutritional issues other than nutritional deficiency because they weren't being fed or lack thereof taking care of them because I wasn't able to take care of them. So stop. And I don't know how I got onto that. Shout out to tonight's unannounced sponsor, Buffalo Trace. <laughs> Sprinkle Cheeto Puffs only with Vitacan. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Northfin USA, very much still love it. Actually, you know what? If it's your first time ordering from Northfin USA, write this down. 
J. Wilson, 15, get 15% off. Everything else, thanks, 10. Y'all can use that. Get all crazy, y'all. Um, you should grab Jeremy from food. Jeremy for a food talk one night. He's great with that section of the hobby. Awesome. Sergeant Tanks is a great dude. Five minutes for one more idea. Flappy gums. Jay is going to be the new Netflix series, Tiger Barb King. Absolutely not. <laughs> hey, Jay, if you were looking for some good fish food, you should try Northern USA. Um, let's see. Very well said, Jay, in the feeding regime. Healthiest my fish have ever been is when, I can, when I'm constantly on the road. It's true. Everyone overfeeds. I don't overfeed. I don't know why you say that. You're so rude. You know, my, my feelings are actually hurt from that. I was crocheting a brand new blanket from my goldfish, Nipsey. Nipsey's really upset that you made the comments that I'm not supposed to feed any snacks. That hurt my feelings because I felt like it was a direct attack. I felt like now in today's present world that you just directly found me, little Miss Paradith out here in Kansas, and you said, you don't feed that goldfish, Nemsy, no more like that. And I took that to heart. I don't like you anymore, Jay Wilson. And I'm going to crochet a blanket just for you so you can smother your face in it. So, look, stop overfeeding. Um, I got four minutes or so. I don't know why I'm timing myself like, oh, my God. I ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to the next room and have a powwow with myself and my cat. Um, but I am going to make that video. I don't know if you've seen it on Instagram. And, and by the way, this is my first drink today. I am just having fun. Um, you get four or five of these puppies in me and it'll probably get really crazy. But there's a video I posted on Instagram. And it said, uh, well, hello. Welcome to my home. I'm going to redo that video. <laughs> so look out for that. It's going to be fun. Are you even allowed to have any sugar in your diet? Um, I don't have a diet. <laughs> I had a bunch of guts ripped out. I'm supposed to watch certain greasy foods, but brother's got to have a burger every once in a while. <laughs> so here we go. I told you I'd show you these tanks. We're going to look at them top to bottom. Shout out to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, let me put that drink down. I'm actually having a lot of fun. So this puppy, I don't know if you remember. You probably do because you're like, you don't have them yet. Um, this is Zebra Pleco Sanctuary. Uh, I'm not, I like the wood. I've done some research. I've talked to a few people. They said that would be okay, but not too much wood, whatever. But However, I really like the stones. I like the clashing. I do dig the light. The black and white are going to look phenomenal in here. Uh, they are at somebody's tropical fish farm right now being held for me because I had no place for them at the time. And I did not want to bring very expensive plecos to a not so good situation. So we're going to get those back as soon as he's able to ship and we're going to rock and roll. Now, this bad boy is, I love it, right? I've got the frog. Look how thick the frog bit is. I don't know if you can see that on there, but ha, dang, baby. It's frog bitty. Um, looks real good. Everybody does well in here. I haven't lost a single fish in here. Uh, sushi is sushi and the Tetris. Uh, these are embers. I think they really do well with all the green and kind of that brown. A couple river stones, little messed up log, and a mystery snail that's not so much of a mystery. Uh, but this tank does really well. This, of course, does have a Zet light. And I think the focalness of the Zet light and how powerful it is combined with the warmth and the nutrients in the water really help these plants stay lush. Um, this is new. Um, let me answer a couple questions real quick. So how fast did that pump drain your tank from CJ? Quick, actually. Um, I pulled it out because I had to help move a bunch of stuff because somebody had to go. So there's six inches of water left, but it'll drain it to an eighth of an inch. Uh, which North fin food would you suggest to five to seven inch discus? Uh, one to two millimeter krill pro. Easy, hands down. Easy, easy, easy. So if you feed your fish one once a day, every other day, is that too much? I feed my fish one a day. No, just whatever you're feeding right now, cut it in half. So whatever you pull out of the bag, cut that sucker in half. Uh, great ideas tonight, guys. So why don't you like flower horns? Um... 
I don't like the selectiveness, right? They throw away everything that doesn't have the the car, you know, the KOK, right? They they throw away anything that doesn't look good, um, and then they're just natively where they're throwing these fish. It's destroying that habitat, and then I just they're great, but think about how many you see now times that probably by a hundred. Nobody really knows where they came from. Nobody can nobody can tell you definitively what fish made that fish. Um, doo -doo -doo, location, region, community, buffalo head. Uh, let's see. Maybe you should have some spirits. They're a downer, right? <laughs> I actually am. Uh, I'm naturally energetic. And when I get to talk about this stuff, it just makes it even more energetic for me. Um, well, fish nerds got to run. Have a great night. You too. What's up, brother? Hit the like button. Whoops. True, true, true. Zoom in. Okay. I can't zoom in. It's a computer. So this guy, and I'll kind of go over it a little bit. He was in a very, very small tank. Love, love, love that bad boy. He is absolutely sexy. I wanted to change his name from Tom Brady since Tom Brady is now with the Buccaneers, but his name's TB and it's going to stay TB. Um, hopefully you can still see this tank. I have a smorgasbord of things in it. Uh, it started off with three logs and then I went crazy and just added a bunch of stuff. But you can see a bunch of Sarayu stone, bunch of wood, <laughs> mystery snail, very, very active, very, very big, bunch of neon tetras. So these were the neon tetras that I had in my apartment and what was left in the 220 gallon tank. Uh, very easy substrate, added some stand at the bottom for a little bit of stability because I wanted to place all these logs and I didn't want them to sink too fast. And I'm using the Fluval Nano light a desktop light. It does really well. And ultimately what I'd like to do is get frog bit to hang out. Look at this little butthead. Let's see. He loves me. He really, really loves me. Look at him. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on fishy. Boop. Um, but ultimately I want frog bit to hang out down here and I've got a bunch of seaweed. Actually, let me show you the shrimp tank. I know I'm over time, but I don't really care. Um, everyone that has to leave, I get it. Oh my God. Wow. TB is fire. Yeah, no, he is really fire. I've he was in another tank and he just wasn't showcased, right? He wasn't, he didn't have an opportunity to shine. Now he gets to shine. Let me show you. Um, so I'm just, I'm just super stoked with the way these turned out. I wanted to play with planet nano style things, but I mean, really what is a nano tank, right? You could put a 75 gallon and put nano fish in there. It's a nano tank and it's got nano fish in it. Um, but I got a uh, TB from, NC betta fish. Awesome dude. Killer, killer, killer. John Edwards. What's up, my man? So I added some, some stone in here to help keep the Anubius down. I don't know if you can see that, but, uh, keeps the Anubius down. And then I grabbed some stuff from his old tank and I just really like Anubius. The petite Nana. I think I like saying it. Ah, the petite Nana. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how this tank kind of grows and then this tank just does what it does. It's just really great. It looks sexy, except for when I leave this stuck to the glass. Come on. Um, but it really, really, really is a fantastic aquarium. It just, it's natural. I'm letting it go. I don't mess with it. And then hopefully one day this will be ready to go. So let me run out here real quick and I'll show you the shrimp tank. And then I'll post before pictures of it because... It's going to be dark in here. So this is my son's room. Look at that. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, there's, 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 there's got to be hundreds of shrimp in here. I actually tied a little bit of, I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I say Subwasser Tang, but I know I'm pronouncing it really wrong. Uh, Flipper is a uh, hundred thousand times better than a mag float. And I'll show you why in a second. But I pulled all the moss out of the sump that I had. But this uh, freshwater seaweed was just a little bit that I kind of stuck to a log. And look at that. Just with my son feeding, it's crazy. It just, it, I, you can see around it. It's, it's absolutely insane. The whole thing around is lush green. Like these were little sprigs. And they just went crazy. And the only thing I can attest it to is nobody was doing maintenance on it. My son's three. He doesn't know how to do maintenance. God bless you, cat. Um, and 
that I think that's what happened, right? They just started breeding. Of course they're ugly shrimp because they're crossbreeding. There's a few cool ones in there, but no water changes, just top offs. And that sucker is flourishing and it's the nitrates, right? That's the idea. And shrimp don't really do much. Chevy fish. You're welcome. You have a great night. Is there a website for them? Uh, I think you can get them on flip aquatics. You can get them. Uh, maybe even Northfin USA carries them. I have to check. I don't remember if I added them or not. <laughs> Um, but let me show you why I like them better. So there's a reason why they call it the flipper. Let me get to that point for you. Almost just squished. It. <laughs> okay. So typical way you would operate it is just like this, right? Got your little felt pad. You're just kicking up stuff, right? You'll notice that there is a built-in razor blade. It's not sharp, but it's a nice blade. Well, this is why they call it the flipper. And I didn't know this until I got them. But you get off your stuff and then you're like, oh man, I just cannot seem to get this spot. It's crusty. I should have to get a razor blade and go in and do it. So what you do with the flipper is you take it, pull it off, and it flips, right? Do you see that? Then now you have the scraper side hitting the glass. Whee! And you can push and take, get out of the way. See that? You can see, actually see the line of what I pulled. I don't know if you can, but I can. Um, so I really love it. It's versatile. It's great. And I won't have another one. A matter of fact, I have a max on the Tanganyikan tank because it needed it bad. And I was able to get one in a pinch. And the thing is phenomenal. Um, does anybody remember Sonic? <laughs> shum, shum, bubble. Uh, smelly cat. Um, okay, for the Yankees, cool. Is there a website where I can get a better like TB? Ah, you can try. Contact NC Betta Fish. You can check out Space City. They may have it. Um, yeah, so awesome. Hmm. So it's double-sided. So it's not double-sided, but it is in a sense. So when you flip it, there's these little, I wish I had one that wasn't wet, but it has these little rubber feet on the inside, on the back side, right? So you got the, the pad that'll help scrape the glass. When it flips, the magnet goes and you've got these little rubber feet on the other side of that inside felt pad. So when it does that, that blade is actually now touching the glass. So when you move it, it scrapes whatever it is. I like the way you talk to people how you keep your tank up. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I. it is what it is. I'm gonna tell you the ups and downs and ultimately, hopefully it works. Dude, we have a 20 pound cat that looks exactly like yours. <laughs> His name is Sonic. Um, and Sonic don't care about nothing, <laughs> zero things. Uh, can you get them in the UK? Um, Dennis, I'm sure you can. Uh, if not, contact Flipper on Instagram. I think it's Flipper Cleaner. I don't know. There is. It's, that's not a plug. I just literally, somebody kept talking about it and I said, ah, I'll get one. So I got one. Then I was talking to Rob at Flip Aquatics and I said, dude, I need three more. And I get three more. And then um, my buddy who lives here, uh, had a max. I mean, this sucker is huge. And man, I put it on the glass and it's so strong with that blade. It's perfect. Uh, is that a water box behind you? No, it's a Neptunian cube. All right, folks. Uh, oh, somebody said I lost weight. I did. Um, I was getting way too fat. Go back and look at videos. And when I say fat, I mean that for me. And there's the books over there. Actually, the books right here. I read this book. Can't hurt me. I'm going to start reading it again. Um, and here's my motivation and then we'll end it. Okay. Um, I did. I lost a lot of weight. I was at 206 maybe. I was in a size 36 pair of pants. Anything I put on t-shirt wise had to be a large. Any pants I put on didn't ever, they never fit right. Um, I was disgusted with myself, right? We're not body shaming you. I know, but this is my motivation. So 
I, I was going through internal stuff. My mind was just not right. Everything about me was not right. So I read this book, You Can't Hurt Me. It's not for everybody. So please, if, you, if it's not for everybody, just read the summary about it and then decide if you want to read it. But uh, David Goggins is, a, is an inspiration to me for some of the things he's overcame. And I needed to channel my anger. I needed to channel my insecurities. I needed to channel my my emotions. I did. I don't. I still don't know really how to do emotions. I know excitement. I know not how to have excitement, and I know to sleep. <laughs> so um, I had to figure out how to channel all of that: my excitement, my anger, my depression, my anxiety, all of it. And I used to be really athletic, and I just let myself go. And I did it twice that I let myself go because I got better and then um, lost the weight and I got fat again. And it was fat for me. I'm 5'8". I always tell people I'm like 6'2", 6'3", on videos until they see me. (laughs) Uh, I'm 5'8", and 200 plus pounds is not healthy. It's not not a good look for my, my future. So I went ham sandwich. I basically did the poor man's keto. I talked to my sister who does keto. She is a massage therapist and uh, she's an aspiring nutritionist. And her and I just really started chatting and I went to work. I worked out. I was running. I did everything. And at the end of the day, I am down to 170. And it didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of time and a lot of hard work. And don't you have to deliver a ring to Mordor? My precious. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Uh, that's not my job anymore. Uh, but yes, at the end of the day, I feel much better. I have more energy. I sleep better. My mind is clear. And it was better for me and better for my son because I didn't want to be the dad that wasn't able to I don't care if my kid wanted to throw a ball or he freaking wanted to push a Barbie car. It doesn't matter. I wanted to be the dad that can do it. And I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to do that. So you got to find what it is that you can channel that negative energy towards, right? It, It has to be, let's say you're having problems at work or home or school or friendships, relationships. You're not happy with yourself. You're not happy with your career. Whatever it is, you need to channel the negative and create a positive out of it. And you do that by doing something that you sure as hell don't want to do. And I sure as hell didn't want to clang and bang weight and run in the evening after working. I didn't want to do it, but all of that energy had to go somewhere. So it takes, and I'm making this up, it takes two weeks to break a bad habit. Takes two minutes to start one. So grind it out, grind it the F out, find it. Doesn't have to be working out. Do some pushups, do a six minute, eight minute workout every day, eight minutes. There's apps, there's YouTube videos, go out and freaking do it. Do it for two weeks and see how you feel. I'm telling you, it will change your life. It doesn't have to be working out. It could be anything reading. Maybe you wanted to read, you can't hurt me. Maybe you wanted to read the Bible. Maybe you wanted to read an African cichlid book front to back. Do something, channel that negative into something positive and let it go. Great stream, Jay. It was fun. Had a great time. Have a great night. Stay safe. I'll leave you with this. Be safe. Don't be a turd burglar. Go out if you have to. Stay away from everybody and respect the human. It's the idea. Respect the human. Tell somebody you love them. Call your friend that you haven't talked to. Find out how they're doing. Truly find out how they're doing. Don't send an email. Don't text. Call them. Call a family member, something. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. It's been fun. I can't wait till next Wednesday. Cheers to you. Cheers to your family. You know what's next.